Greetings to you, my dear good friends. We have come again today, the third Sunday of Easter, year A. And our readings comes like this. The first reading is taken from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 14. And from verse 22 to 33, we have the responsorial psalm from Psalm 16. And our second reading comes from the letter of St. Peter, first letter of St. Peter, chapter 1, verse 17 to 21. Our gospel is taken from the gospel according to Luke, chapter 24, from verse 13 to 35. My dear good friends, I turned my reflection according to what is written in the Gospel according to Matthew chapter 18 verse 20, which says, When two or three gather in my name, I am there with them. When two or three gather in my name, when two or three are together in my name, I am there with them. Whether they gather together discussing or they gather together reflecting, or they gather together singing, or they gather together meditating, or they gather together chatting about God. Our Lord Jesus Christ is there in their midst. And our Lord Jesus Christ proved this point by his presence in the midst of the two disciples on their way to Emmaus. And our Lord Jesus Christ as well proved this when he manifested through the presence of the Holy Spirit in the person of St. Peter, who was preaching about the resurrected Christ in the first reading. My dear good friends, the point I want to bring out from these readings is simple. Let us talk about Jesus. Always talk about Jesus wherever you are. Talk about Jesus in your workplace. Talk about Jesus in your family, not just in the church. Talk about Jesus and what he is doing in your life. Talk about the principles of Jesus, the principles of justice, the principles of love, the principles of kindness as we can see in the in the gospel of the day that these people before they had the third person in their midst in the person of our lord jesus christ which they don't even know that he was the person they have been discussing about the event of Jesus that transpired in Jerusalem. They left Jerusalem. They were heading to Emmaus. They continued occupying their discussion with the event of Christ. And that was why Christ was attracted to them to come and be with them. He came with two items. First, he came with the word of God. 
Because Jesus is the word of God. Of John chapter 1 verse 1. The word. The word of God. Secondly, Jesus came with the bread of life. Because Jesus is the bread of life. Of John chapter 6 verse 35. The bread of life. He came with these two things. He started giving it to them, one after the other. He started with the word. He asked them question. What are you discussing about? And they asked him, are you the only foreigner in Jerusalem who did not know what transpired in Jerusalem? As big as Jerusalem is, there is an event that took place which everybody in Jerusalem and the other nations surrounding Jerusalem know about this event of Jesus. And Jesus was asking them. They started bringing out their ignorance. They started exposing their unbelief. Because these people, they have been following Christ and they have been hearing the word of God, but ignorance and unbelief just engulfed their brain. They could not understand anything again. And Jesus started talking to them, explaining to them, bringing the consciousness of the reality of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ to them. It was coming to them like fire, because the word of God is like fire. The word of God is a double-edged sword. The word was piercing their heart to the extent that they could not allow Jesus to depart. They begged him to stay with them. Stay with us, Lord Jesus. I normally say this when I'm doing adoration. Stay on my Jesus. Stay with us, Lord Jesus Christ. These people, these two disciples going to Emmaus, they said this to Jesus. Stay with us, Jesus. Stay with us. It is a blessed thing to have Jesus in your midst. His company is the ultimate. So, when Jesus explained everything about the word, he made sure that they fed well with the word. And then he broke the bread, which is the bread of life. His own body that he said, if you do not eat this body and drink this blood, you will not have life in yourself. It was why he was breaking the bread, which is which is his body, their eyes open because they have heard the word and now they have seen the bread of life. So my dear good friends, we have these two items, two realities in the Holy Mass celebrated in Catholic Church. When we gather on Sunday to celebrate the Holy Mass, we first of all how we first of all have the liturgy of the word. We are the, the first reading, the psalm, the second reading, and the gospel will be read to the people of God. And the homily will come to interpret, to bring home the word we have heard. Just like Jesus was bringing it home to these two disciples on their way to Emmaus. So also a priest of God stands on the altar to break the word of God, to explain the word of God, to make it easier for people to understand. After which, all of us will go into the liturgy of the Eucharist, as Jesus did to, for these people. It is in the breaking of the, the bread, the Eucharistic Jesus, that the people of God will come to hear his voice, will come to see him, will come to feel him, will come to eat him and be like him. And then move out like St. Peter in the first reading to evangelize, to preach about the resurrected Christ. That is how it is. St. Peter was preaching with passion. Remember that St. Peter was the one that even met. We are asking, are you not one of them? Peter was denying. Was denying. 
But now, Peter became so bold because what he was preaching was a reality and continues to be reality. Jesus, uh, Jesus resurrected from the dead and he is alive forever. St. Peter was preaching in the first reading, preaching to people and 3,000 people got converted on the same day. So let us uphold the word of God. Eat the word of God. Pray with the word of God. Saturate yourself with the word of God. Meditate with the word of God. This is very, very important in our spiritual growth. Ignorance of the word of God is ignorance of God. It is when we embrace the word of God and fear ourselves. Remember what is written in John chapter 15 verse 7. When you remain in me and my word remains in you, ask whatever it is, it will be done to you. Remember what is written in Psalm 1 verse 1 to 3 about reading the word of God and meditating on, on it morning, afternoon, and night. My dear good friends, I enjoin you today to start reflecting and meditating on the word of God. There is life in the word of God. There is healing in the word of God. There is faith in the word of God. There is peace in the word of God. Embrace the word of God. The word of God is God. Embrace the Holy Eucharist. Adore Jesus always. And you will never regret. I pray for you that you will have peace of mind and joy while reading the word of God and meditating on it. That the Holy Eucharist will also help you to be balanced in life. The word of God and the Holy Eucharist gives us the peace that is everlasting. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy Sunday to you. God bless you.